Hello and welcome back to Asia Now. My name is Alex and in this video I'm going to show you guys a little bit around Cambodia and tell you guys my first initial thoughts about this place. Now if you watch any of my videos before you know that usually I speak very fast and I cut out a lot of the fat and that you know I trim down the video to where it's a bit more digestible. In this video it's going to be completely opposite. Something very different. I'm going to just walk around for about 30 minutes show you guys what things are around here give you some information some tips whatever i can find so just a really different type of video i'm not going to do any editing in this so if the video dies or runs out of battery or something maybe i'll, my, I'll change the battery but that's for anyway so right now i'm here in Phnom Penh, uh, cambodia i've been here for less than a week still about five six days and uh it's a little bit different than any other country in several different ways but it's got a lot of similarities to thailand for example um, and it's got some similar similarities to the Philippines as well as Vietnam so I feel like so far um, Cambodia is like a mixture of everything combined it's really hot so and my eyes are getting a little bit squinty so let me put these on the Sun is directly above me right now so it might get a little dark at some point but it is 38 degrees right now and Cambodia apparently is still in its rainy season according to somebody uh, what they told me yesterday so I'm gonna walk around here. I'm here by Riverside uh, where my apartment is, but it's a big popular temple here. I gotta make sure I cross the road first before I get hit by something. So if you've never been to Southeast Asia, crossing the road is like a whole entire ordeal. You cannot hesitate. You gotta go with the flow and you gotta be sure to look at the right direction. So that's one thing I noticed about Cambodia. It's got the same kind of um, street as Canada. So at least they drive on the right side, according to me. But I've been in Southeast Asia for so long, this feels like the wrong side now. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, uh, right now, actually, I don't even know what I'm looking at sometimes. You know, I got to read the building names. It's, it's really cool here because you can see there's a lot of development, right? But also, there's a lot of areas that need a lot of infrastructure. I don't know anything yet. I have not traveled, obviously, remotely within one kilometer radius of where I'm staying. So I plan on doing that probably. I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> or how long I'm gonna stay here. But it's very exciting. So let me tell you some other stuff. For cost of living right now, uh, Cambodia seems a bit more pricey than I thought. It's definitely not expensive, don't get me wrong. But I just assumed because it was like not a popular tourist destination, not a lot of people come here compared to like, you know, other Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, Singapore, you know, Thailand, whatever. But at least if you're gonna go through the regular channels of traveling like going through Airbnb and uh, using taxis and like eating at Western restaurants, all that, the usual, not really typical way uh, somebody should travel, it's gonna be expensive basically, right? So and when I say expensive, I'm saying in comparison to what I assumed. Let me give you some example, for example. Let me give you some example, for example. <laughs> so no editing, I guess, right? So right now for my rent, on Airbnb, they wanted about $600 for a month. And that's quite a bit when you consider what you can get in other countries for 600 bucks because it is technically just a studio. They put a divider there, so it looks like a one bedroom now, but it's still a studio, it's pretty small. It's got a kitchenette, which I don't want to cook to draw any kind of roaches or whatever. So, but everything is included. And it's not in the best area of town apparently, but I liked it, it was nearby a river. So, so that's 600, oh, that's pretty cool, right? So that's $600 right there USD and uh, for that price in Vietnam or Thailand or uh, some other places like I've never been to Laos but at least those two countries you get a really nice decent place so cost of food for example uh, yesterday I had a uh, food at a Middle Eastern place it came to 11 USD now once again that's pretty cheap if you compare it to like Canada the US eating at like a Middle Eastern restaurant having authentic Lebanese food might cost you 20 to 30 bucks so it's still cheap in that sense but for Cambodia oh there's a coffee shop here maybe I'll, I'll get some coffee maybe not because everybody looking at me I'm feeling a little bit shy right now so for Cambodia 11 USD for a meal may be a bit too expensive right so that's what I'm talking about it's not really cheap compared to some countries so uh, let me try to think of another cost internet though that's pretty cheap I just came out of the mall and that's why I'm making this video um, for six dollars you can get a month-long plan with 60 gigs if you're a regular person that's more than enough if you're someone like me if just uploading videos not non-stop that might be different but like for a regular person six dollars a month for internet for 30 days for 60 gigs is not bad you know so um, one thing I know is about security 
there is some security but not as much as uh, the philippines there's not security guard at every door so that's a little bit different my mouth is drying up a little bit so let me see if i can find a cafe oh i got a haircut yesterday so you can see i'm looking nice and uh fresh nice fade the dude only wanted to charge me four us dollars so that ain't not bad either right so oh i'm sweating so bad Ooh, a cafe coffee coffee time uh, i'm gonna sit down somewhere so we can talk more comfortably so as far as cost of, uh, cost of living i let this guy go let me show you guys a little bit around here before I start rambling on a bit. Oh, and Tuk Tuk. So Cambodia is still using a lot of Tuk Tuks. You see them offering you rides. And the one cool thing about the Tuk Tuks here in Cambodia, they actually um, have the Tuk Tuk on the app, right? So you can go ahead and get some... Oh, it's a red light. I can cross. You can order a tuk tuk instead of a taxi and they'll pick you up and it's a bit cheaper so keep that in mind if you're coming here this area looks a little familiar to me i think i have been walking here before i'll walk on the other side a little bit but so internet's cheap taxis are really affordable you can get around with one or two dollars depending on how far you want to go um rent not so much food not so much i've yet to try real cambodian food so i'm excited about that uh, I've made some friends here already within like the past few days that might show me around. Um, speaking of making friends, the locals tend to be extremely friendly. Uh, I mean, everywhere is going to have good and bad, but at least towards me, they've been super kind. The, the restaurant, the servers, the people on the streets that I talk to. And uh, it seems like dating, let me go ahead and show you guys this first so you can see some stuff. Seems like dating might be easier here as well. I'm just assuming uh, I haven't been looking at anybody, but like, I just naturally the smiles I get or like from what I hear from other expats it seems like dating is easy here but like anywhere else you gotta kind of like be careful who you date right because a lot of people uh, might try to like just date you for your money or I don't want to be prejudiced but like any country that's not like financially stable you're gonna have opportunists but then again men are no angels either right so half of us are trying to do stuff that uh, we're not really honest about let's say, let's say it that way so uh no different i'd say from any other country when it comes to dating especially online dating and all that stuff so be careful um who you're hanging out with and same with the bars you know people keep telling me about like watch out for the bar girls or the massage if you're gonna get a massage they have like two entrances to your wallet locker for example if you're gonna put your wallet there somebody's gonna come from the other end and take your stuff right so I don't take massages, I don't go for massages, so it's not a worry for me. But if you guys uh, come here, the massages are cheap though. I've seen massage for three USD for a half an hour. I don't know what a casual massage is, but that's what it was listed at. And these tuk tuk guys will drive you places. And the one cool thing about that is you can rent one of these guys through the app, the Grab app, for like four hours. Not that expensive. So if you got a bunch of places uh, in your mind that you want to go visit and you don't want to like keep ordering taxis back and forth, you can just hire a dude for a few dollars they'll drive you around and then you can tip him if you want and all so people are super friendly this man right here smiling at me you know it makes you feel nice being out here to be honest so as the days go by i'm gonna go ahead and definitely immerse myself a bit more into this culture and a little bit more into local life i'm still only eating western food because like i'm saving the khmer food for a, a video that i want to make so for my first time my first experience I'm gonna presume it's gonna be similar to Thailand because they're bordering each other, so some of the food might be similar. Um, but we're gonna get into all that later on. Uh, I think I'm gonna find a cafe to sit down, have a drink, and then talk to you guys in that way. I see a coffee station here. Hello. Um, can I have a coffee, please? Latte, ice latte. I'm yeah, um, less sugar, please. Thank you. Yeah, less sugar. Thank you. I'm always a big fan of like place like this because, firstly, it's cheap, right? So like, for one or two dollars, you're gonna get a real coffee, espresso, latte, whatever you want. And secondly you're helping out a local instead of going to starbucks or something like that so 
at least you're kind of like doing a good thing in that sense because you know starbucks don't need my money <laughs> they got enough they should give me money they should pay me to drink the coffee right um and i've noticed a lot of places like this actually here in cambodia where they are just simply selling one or two items but it seems like they're working hard so um that's really really neat people just like seem happy man like i don't know maybe it's still too early to tell maybe i'm still in the honeymoon phase right so we'll see what happens i'm just waiting for my coffee here so um so far so good i can't complain to be honest um what else have i got planned i mean if you know about cambodia you know about angkor wat right the big famous temple that most people would probably come to cambodia for i don't know if i have plans and seen that yet because i saw it already uh like six or seven years ago when i first came here but uh for now if something comes up if i meet some people that want to go i want to travel why not because i love to see it again i hear they just built an airport there as well so tourism is like on its way up you know it's still a, kind of like a sleeping giant over here um cambodia but i could see it really developing with the right government and like proper investment but here let me show you guys a little bit around here okay. oh, thank you i can pay you after how much is it four thousand i'll figure this out one second five thousand okay cool. Sorry, I'm making a video, you know. <laughs> I want to show people how kind Cambodian people are. Okay, <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, okay. So how, do you, how do you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. But how do you say in uh, Khmer? Uh, uh, Akun, right? Akun. Akun, okay. Akun, okay. Akun, okay. Akun, okay. Akun, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I lied a little bit about not editing. Um, <laughs> the camera fell a little bit and I had to get sorted out before I do anything. So, uh, that girl just smiled at me. I'm so happy. Anyway, she's gone now. Oh, I wish the camera was looking at you guys. But, look how much I'm sweating. I don't know if you guys can see. 40 degrees out here. Tell me if there's anything better than when a female smiles at you randomly. I don't know what you guys want. Growing up in Canada, maybe in my high school days I got a lot of smiles, but as a grown man, not a lot of people smiling at me randomly, especially not attractive women. So, to come into Southeast Asia, I can see why a lot of people stick around here for a long time, um, aside from just the cost of living. So, I'm gonna enjoy this in a second and we'll continue to talk. One other thing I like about Cambodia, I don't care about you uh, environmentalist people, whatever you want to feel. I still like the fact that they give you plastic straw. I miss this. I'm sick and tired of drinking my coffee out of like a mushy straw by the time I'm halfway there, right? So that ain't that nice. Not for me anyway. Sorry, environment. I think the corporation, the countries could do a little bit more than me and my one cup of coffee with my one plastic. <laughs> too much? Are we getting too, too political here out of the blue for no reason? Um, let me get situated. We'll go for another walk continue and uh yeah i just had lunch i wish i would pour that for you guys but it was just a chicken burger so here's another example of some prices chicken burger french fries and uh coke for five usd basically i mean it's not bad not bad at all could be cheaper but cheap doesn't always mean good right Plus, one thing I want to say for a lot of people, you should never come to Southeast Asia to downgrade your life, you know? Don't come here to just only save money, but make sure that saving money still makes you happy, right? For example, for someone like me, I hate like roaches. I could save probably a lot of money by staying at like a mediocre apartment that a lot of people will be okay with, but I don't want that. I don't want every day where I'm looking around the corner making sure there's no roaches or insects or you know some inconveniences that if the internet doesn't work well or i don't know that's what i mean but if you're comfortable with that then you can save a lot of money um if you have relationship issues back home don't come here and downgrade and get the, even more relationship problems right by like 
getting in with the wrong crew or whatever. So if you come here, keep that in mind. Always have a clear idea of why you're traveling. Well, for me, it's funny, ironic, I'm saying that I have no idea clearly what I'm doing in Cambodia. But for me, it's a little bit different because this is still work for me. It's my job. I still make videos. This is my, like, um, what's that word? My income. <laughs> yeah, my, my source of income is what I'm trying to say. So enough of that rant. Let's go for a little bit of a walk so you guys can check out the neighborhood. camera you want to say hello <laughs> I, you're very cute thanks uh, no je ne parle français only English yes hopefully Cambodian Khmer soon no I'm gonna walk thank you thank you okay okay so thank you Perfect example of friendly people for absolutely no reason. I think she was waiting for me to turn around so she could say hello. Um, there's a lot of French people here. Uh, obviously, I think I, I really got to look up the history. I'm sorry, guys. I, um, from what I've heard, France ruled Cambodia for a little bit. So there has to be some kind of French resemblance, influence. I do see it in the architecture, the, some of the food, the restaurants, and naturally the people that I've met on the street. There has been some. French people so I think there's like a not a fallout but some kind of residual remains of uh, Cam, uh, France yeah don't record and cross the street unless you're very experienced like moi like myself so anyhow getting back on track with this long video that we're on so I feel like I'd rather do this kind of video sometimes in the interviews Sometimes street interviews are a lot of fun because you get a lot of different perspective for you guys, the viewers. But for me, at this point, sometimes it feels a little bit redundant unless I have a clear idea of what the video is going to be about. And, uh... Okay, so, I have to change the battery. One, one really downside of the GoPro, the battery life and the overheating. Anyhow, as I was saying, so for me, um, I'm going to try to make more videos like this. I think it's just, you know, a good change sometimes and give you guys a little bit more insight about the countries that I'm in. Uh, why not? One thing I've noticed here, a lot of uh, Indian restaurants actually, at least in the neighborhood that I'm in, a lot of Indian restaurants, a lot of uh, Indian people walking around in the nighttime by Riverside as well. I wonder how long they've been here as well. So, yeah. Getting back on track, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was talking about. Um, Right now, it's just local life, man. It seems uh, seems good, you know? <laughs> seems everything is like, in its own way, it's like stable, you know? I can't explain what I'm trying to say. Right now, really, there is no pressure on me in Cambodia. Um, there's nothing that, I've seen a lot of kids riding a motorcycle like this, right? Like, really, really young, like five-year-olds, eight-year-olds. But that's nothing new if you've been to Southeast Asia. So you'll see that in any country down here. It's not like uh, Canada where you gotta be 16 years old to ride a motorcycle or something. So, and I'm sure many other countries. I'm gonna go ahead before I die. Um, what else can I tell you guys? I don't know, but a lot of female ladies riding motorcycles. That's always fun to see. Uh, independent, just... Um, I have seen a lot more motorcycles here as well compared to Malaysia, the last country I was in. Um, motorcycles seem to be the primary sort of transport here. There really isn't like public transportation. I haven't seen a bus or some kind of like Suntao or jeepney. Only those bad boys, the tuk-tuks. But if you're a local and if you've been here long enough, I feel like you'll find a way of getting around. For me personally, I've always said riding a motorcycle in Southeast Asia can be dangerous. However, this would be the country I think if I was gonna start anywhere would be here because uh, they, like I mentioned earlier, drive on the same side that I'm used to. And it seems to be a little bit less traffic. It's not as chaotic as some other Southeast Asian countries. So uh, yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Maybe I'll consider it if I stay here long enough. 
why not uh, learn to ride a motorcycle? I've kind of been starting to learn. Tom has taught me, um, but not fully yet, right? Obviously, driving on an island. Uh, hello. Small road is very different than driving on a main road like this with a bunch of cars and trucks and what, whatnot. Got some coconut here, but I got a coffee off next time I was have one of these coconuts. Um, ooh, a grill. People cooking chicken. Everything looks exciting still. I can never get sick of this, man. Um, what else can I share with you guys? Uh, huh, let me think. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna point the camera outwards, right? So you guys don't have to look at my mug the whole time. Let's go in here. I'm gonna set my coffee down. We'll switch the camera angle. I think you guys will appreciate that a bit more probably. So I'm gonna do this, like this. Okay, all right. Let's play a, a game. I spy with my big old eye, or however that goes. I, I spy, how does it go? I spy with my blue eye, some, something creepy. And it's not me. <laughs> no, but uh, for realsies. Uh, so here's another coffee shop, as I mentioned earlier. Um, people are cooking. I don't know what this is, but it looks good. I think it's like a noodle shop, a noodle station. Maybe we go ask this girl what they sell. Hello, hi. What is this noodles? Mmm, just noodles, huh? Hi. <laughs> this is your son? Oh, okay, your baby, huh? Are you sell noodles? Is it chicken, pork? <laughs> is that your girl daughter she's shy yeah, okay no problem thank you Akun. i'm gonna walk around thank you bye little man <laughs> i think she had a, a younger daughter that was like super shy and just ducked under the table i don't blame her man some random dude with a camera coming i just want to show you guys um some street food some friendly people the corner over here Interesting, interesting. I've seen a lot of chicken shops around here. A lot of people selling chicken, uh, obviously fried chicken, chicken sandwiches, chicken wings, chicken things. Let me cross the road before I get hit. Should have changed the angle on this camera a super wide lens right now so everything might seem a little further for you guys um oh barbecue another cafe oh that's cool I'm surprised i haven't seen any massage ladies yet usually they're all over the streets Oh, I spoke too soon. Hmm. These areas will be really popular in the evening. All these shops light up. And uh, you can have a beer, ponytail. Um, look how cool these buildings are. Interesting. If I had like something to do, I think it would be better. Like next time if I go to get a haircut or do some banking or something, we'll have a purpose here and uh It'll be fun, right? Instead of me. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Okay. 
Okay, okay. I see somebody. Wow, it looks so small on camera. I just saw this. Sugarcane juice. You guys can see my big head, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's basically my neighborhood. It's got a lot of small streets, a lot of like big streets. You get haircut here, have some food over there, buy a t-shirt over there. You know, life's good, man. LG, LG. Um, some people, I'm not gonna lie, you might be bored of this on a daily basis. If you had no work, or if you're retired, maybe and no significant other or partner, or I don't know, just alone, right? By yourself. But me, I got a whole a lot of editing, videotaping, talking to people, and like my time goes by super quick. I don't know where it goes, to be honest. I'm sometimes surprised I only have a few hours a day, even though I don't have a real job. For those of you that don't know, making these videos, this one maybe not so much because I'm not gonna edit. But typically, making a video it's quite time consuming because you have to plan it out you have to film it you got to edit it you got to release it there's a lot of like just just time consuming even like now the editing program that i'm using is no longer free so <laughs> every time i exit the app to like get a image or something it obviously takes time and i go back it's like an ad playing um also i have the other channel now asia now if you guys relax bro if you guys want to uh, check out some Southeast Asia, mainly Philippines news. I'll put the link to that down as well so you guys can keep connected. Um, that's it. I think it's probably over 20 minutes at this point. Since the battery died, I can't really tell the exact time. I have to replace it. So, you guys have anything to say about me or Cambodia or just anything at all, leave it down below. If there's a type of video you want to see, a specific type of video, you can feel free to request it. Maybe I'll make it uh, if I feel like it's suitable for the channel. Um, yeah, man. Anything. This is the main road, by the way. And by the main road, I mean like in my area. And you have the boardwalk on the other side. It's really nice, actually. Um, just the trees and the water. Although the water is very muddy and brown, but still, you get a breeze in the evening. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and liking this video, sharing it because uh i'm gonna keep traveling i'm gonna keep sharing whatever i gotta share with you guys so you let me know okay i stopped talking because these ladies behind me hello they're gonna offer me a massage or not i don't want to put them on camera but sometimes i feel bad i don't want to show people working at massage products i don't know if they want to be seen like that i don't know i don't know if there's a stigma to it or not i don't care what somebody does but maybe in their culture it's not okay to film someone working at a massage parlor or waiting outside with customers. Because, you know, not all massage places are massage places, though. Well. For all adults, to be honest, it's uh, something that happens not totally right, so I might interview that guy after. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna get hit with a car if I don't stop recording, like this bike. And this car. Hey, I remember this guy. <laughs> not today, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm making. I'm making a video, I have to continue. Okay, I have to make a video. Yeah. Maybe next time, thank you. Yeah, monkey trap for every minute. I know, you told me last time, thank you. Shit, <laughs> I said tomorrow to that guy. I don't think I said tomorrow because I don't want to lie to people, but I said I wasn't interested. I said maybe another day, maybe. Anyways, I'll let you guys go. See you guys next time. Bye. My, my full body or something like, you know, like. The point is that I am saying that I am thinking about Malaysia, not like I am a... Yes.